Hi, this is Jackie Scholerman with Scholerman Group of Cobo Banker, your Silicon Valley Connections. Today, I'm with Mike Baird, the prominent local CPA in the Silicon Valley, and I would like to uh, introduce him to you. And Mike, tell us about yourself, where you grew up, what school went to, and how did you become CPA? Sure. So I'll start from the beginning. I actually was born in Miami. I grew up in Vero Beach, Florida, and spent six years in Gainesville as my father studied for a PhD at the University of Florida. So I'm a Floridian, and today as we speak, Irma is bearing down on <laughs> South Florida. So I will be watching it carefully. I actually own homes in South Florida, so Jackie and Richard can appreciate that. Here it's the earthquakes, there it's the hurricanes. So I consider Bureau Beach my home. I went to Bureau Beach High School, and when I graduated from Bureau Beach, my parents had divorced. My father went back to Indiana, where he's from. My mother came to California, so I attended Indiana University, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I went to college, so I went open-minded with the experience. Indiana had a great business school, and most of my friends were in the business school. I met some of the folks from the big four firms, actually the big eight at the time, from Indianapolis as they came onto campus and chose to study public accounting. When I graduated, I had three choices. I could stay in the Midwest, which was the Rust Belt in the mid 80s. I could go back to South Florida where there were cocaine cowboys or I could come out to the golden country, which is California. <laughs> So I chose the latter, and California is an amazing place. We're all so fortunate to have all that we do. I started in public accounting here in Northern California. I spent the first 10 years of my career here. I worked with KPMG in San Francisco on the audit side, and then I worked with Fred Markison CPA in a firm um, in the early 90s. And then I made the decision to move back to South Florida, which I consider home. So I was back in Miami for 14 years. And then as the economy collapsed multiple times in South Florida, I decided that to really accomplish the things I wanted to, the opportunity was to come back to Silicon Valley. So in 2008, I came back to Northern California and resumed my practice in Northern California, which is just absolutely amazing. So what do you do? Do you do corporate or corporate and personal yes. uh, tax? So our practice is very much focused on small businesses. And with small businesses, you have a variety of different activities you're involved with. You have the business itself, which can be a partnership, a corporation, which can be a C corporation or an S corporation, or it can be a sole proprietorship. Then we often work with the owners of the corporation or the business and work on the individual side and then we work on the estate and trust side. So what I like to say is you make money in the business, you want to keep as much as you can, so you want to do as much tax planning as you can. You want to get it from the business to the individual and then the individuals want to create a succession plan for their heirs. So our practice is very much focused on small businesses and individuals. Great. So what are the latest tax laws that you believe would be important for both individuals and as a small business owners we should be aware of and also help us to save more money in our pocket? Sure. So unfortunately for we taxpayers, because I'm a taxpayer as well, things continue to get more and more complicated, both on a domestic and an international basis, and then also on an interstate basis. So just understanding the tax code and doing the planning, whether you have international operations, it's all domestic, or you have multiple state activities, every location has a different tax rate. So trying to create the income source and the, the results in each of the different areas is critically important. But you have to stay on top of it on a consistent basis because it's ever changing. The most important thing for both businesses and individuals is making sure you capture all of the deductions. Many small business people, they pay for things out of their own pocket and they forget to ultimately put it back into the business. 
individuals may have a deduction that they're unaware of mm -hmm. and so they don't take advantage of it. Some of the other things that especially in Silicon Valley that we've had to worry about recently are international bank reporting, it's FBAR, foreign bank account reporting, and it can be pretty extreme, the penalties, if you don't do it properly. And sometimes people don't even realize that, you know, maybe they're from a foreign country and they come to the U.S. and they say, you know what, that money I made over there, it has nothing to do with the U.S. But we have a concept of worldwide income in the United States. Right. And California also has a concept of worldwide income. So those are some of the things that people should be aware of. And in Silicon Valley, people are from around the world. Right. And they're making a lot of money and they have a lot of interest in a lot of different Places. Right. Well, that's interesting. So, can you tell us about um, what are the common advice that people always reach out to you and ask for advice, and and or what are some of the challenges that, as you are dealing with the clients and you encounter, and how do you go about to address those, resolve them? Sure. So the concept is paying the minimum tax allowable. So there's, there's, there are court cases where the system, the Treasury and the IRS and the court system, believe that you don't have to pay any more than you're legally obligated to pay. Mm -hmm. So that's what everybody's goal and ambition is, is to pay as little tax as possible. Well, some of the things that you do with regard to trying to minimize the taxes, again, are the timing of transactions, they're the location of the transaction, and sometimes you bunch deductions in a year where your income is very high if you're on a cash basis. Sometimes you defer income, sometimes you accelerate income so that you put yourself in the minimum tax bracket possible. The other thing is because California has such a high income tax and high property taxes, many people in Silicon Valley fall into the Altman tax so if one year you're not going to get the benefit of a deduction and then the following year you would, then you want to defer those expenses. The other thing that I will say is that everything we talk about today could be different come December or January <laughs> because of what they're talking about, tax simplification and tax reform. There's a possibility that the alternative minimum tax could be eliminated, which would be good for Californians but there's also the possibility that taxes won't be deductible. So that ultimately would be a negative because people pay such a high income tax and such a high property tax. So it's important to, on a consistent basis, stay up on what, are, what is the current legislation and then understand that there are going to be changes on an ongoing basis. Mike, I know you are part of the Rotary. What are the community services are you involved in any charity organizations nonprofit I know in your line of business you probably have very little time but I know you're very active in the community yes so like you I, I am a Rotarian I actually became a Rotarian when I lived in Coral Gables Florida and people often think of Miami as a wealthy place but really Miami is a relatively poor place so I did a lot of work in the inner cities and being that Miami is my home, I have a lot of friends involved in a variety of different organizations. So the Miami Project, Cure Paralysis, one of my good friends was paralyzed playing football. We did and have done a lot of fundraising for that. And there are just so many opportunities. I have a lot of friends that are so involved in, in many different activities that I go and support their activities. In Rotary, most recently, I've been involved with Youth Services. We sponsor Interact Clubs. We sponsor the Gun Interact Club. It's absolutely amazing to see these kids, the things they're involved with, and I shouldn't say kids, I should say young people. Just an amazing group. But the other thing that I've been very involved with throughout my professional career is coaching. I've coached football, I've coached swimming, and those are the things that I really appreciate. I grew up in a community that was relatively poor but people were involved. They really gave back to the community. We didn't even have a police department. I'm sorry, we had a police department. We didn't have a fire department and we didn't have an ambulance squad. It was all volunteer. It was volunteer firemen and volunteer ambulance squads. And so it really shows that we have to give back and can give back and really 
create a great environment. So those are the things that made a great impression on me when I was young, and that's where I try to give back. There is nothing like seeing a young person that learns something and how to do something better and are put into a, a position where they can ultimately fulfill their potential. Yeah. So I and, think and, that's and, important. And, and you're a true role model for the younger uh, generations, and I know you're also involved with Girl Scouts as well. That's right. Yeah. So we, we also charter a Boy Scout troop and a Boy Scout pack, and then we sponsor a Girl Scout troop. So. Um, you know, we are all role models for the young people that we work with, and frankly, they inspire us to go out and do a lot of good things. Right. But it's also important to help the elderly. So something that's very important, you mentioned things in my, in my practice, elderly abuse is something that's real, and it's very important that people have trusted relationships, and they plan for those types of situations. We all think we're going to live forever. And as we get older and older, we don't even realize some of the things we forget. And sometimes people come into our clients' lives and put them in jeopardy and at risk. So it's all of our responsibility as family members, as friends, to work with our clients to help them. So that's an area that, you know, we all love to help children. You know, we all do different charities for people who have disabilities. But when we all get old, and sometimes the elderly are a group that doesn't get a lot of attention. So our Rotary in the world. I just went back to the Atlanta Convention, International Convention for Rotary. Around the world it's a very young organization, but in the United States it's aging and we're recognizing the need to do things for the aging population. And as a professional we watch our clients, we work with the estate and trust attorneys to be sure that everything is going as it should with regard to clients and as they start to lose their capacities we try to make sure that they're with trusted people and are put in a good situation. Well, Mike, um, if one of the viewers wants to get hold of you, uh, what are your phone number, email address, your yes. office address, and so forth? So it's relatively simple. Our address is 990 Industrial Road, Suite 210 in San Carlos, and the zip code is 94070. We're right at the intersection of Industrial and Britain, right off of 101 in San Carlos. Our phone number, also relatively simple, 650-508-1040, as in the tax form, 1040. And 40. Yeah, Fred's had that number for about 45 years, and I right. ran into other CPAs, and they say, I've tried to get that number, and I've seen Fred's got it. So <laughs> we do have that number. My email address is also pretty simple, Mike at FAMCPA. So it's M-I-K-E at F-A-M-C-P-A dot com. Well, this concludes our Silicon Valley connections for this week. I cannot wait to get your feedback or comments. If you have any questions for Mike, just send them over and I will be surely forward it to him and get him to respond to you. Well, you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike.